Matthew chapter 7, <clears throat> verse number 12. The Bible says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. As we go through the Gospel of Matthew, we are presently on the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is getting ready to land the plane. The Bible says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Does your Bible say that? God is concerned about how we treat one another. Looking that, looking at that scripture in context on the Sermon on the Mount and often referred to as the golden rule, uh, we cannot expect to receive good things of God if we don't treat one another right. Hallelujah. And we are to treat one another with love, with honesty, and with a good report amongst men. Amen. We said in the last message on the Sermon on the Mount, we said, ask and it shall be given. And seek and ye shall find and knock, and it shall be open unto you. And we can't expect prayer power if we are mistreating one another. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Our prayer life and our effectiveness in prayer is highly dependent on how we treat each other. Can I back it up this morning? If you look with me in Isaiah chapter 1 and verses 15 through 17, the, the prophet says, And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Can y'all hear me? Learn to do well. Seek judgment. In other words, seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Can y'all hear me this morning? As we dig deep into the golden rule, a principle of justice is laid down within the golden rule. It says basically, whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even to them? And Jesus put it in a positive way. Christ came not only to tell us what to believe, but he also came to tell us what to do. Talk to me, somebody. And, and how to treat one another. I want to go back and look again at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12 and and we can look in there and pluck this out. And the Bible says, 
Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that may have done to us. We done, we done got deep on you now. Amen. <laughs> Can I go a little further? We must not do evil to others for the evil they would do to us. Uh, one songwriter asked a question. She said, what does love have to do with it? Can I answer that this morning? Love is at the root of it. It has everything to do with it. And, 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 and Jesus links the Old Testament and with the New Testament. And, and the second great commandment in the New Testament, it dealt with love. And can I back it up this morning? You go with me to Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 18. The, the Bible says, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. But, but pastor, that's in the Old Testament. Well, let's go on to the new then. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Matthew chapter 22 and verses 38 and 39. The, the Bible says, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Does that sound familiar to you? We must Give the same concern, and same love, same help, same support to our neighbor that we want for ourselves. How we treat others should not be determined by how they treat us. Ah, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. How we treat others should not be determined by how we expect them to treat us. That rascal, <laughs> help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> you, you, you can't treat him bad because he's treated you bad. Yeah. They dogged me, so I'm going to dog them. Yeah, that's, that's not the gospel, amen. That's, that's the world, amen. How we treat them should not be determined how they treat us. Some of y'all got quiet right there. <laughs> got to rethink really about some things now. <laughs> can, can we get some reasoning, some reasoning, some rationale, Betty, behind this, Evelyn? There's some rationale. The, the perfect love of the Heavenly Father, whom we call our Father, is manifested in how we treat one another. Can we break it down? You can't speak this morning to somebody. Can we get a little deeper? You can't smile at somebody this morning. Can I get a little deeper? You have to go out the side door to keep from beating them at the front door. Can't look that way this morning because they're over there this morning. Tell 10 neighbors the gospel is practical, amen. <laughs> when, when the golden rule is enacted, walls come tumbling down. Love is behind the golden rule. Can I back it up this morning? John chapter 13 and verses 34 and 35. The Bible says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Watch it now. 
By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Hallelujah. If you have love one for another. Oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand her. You better love him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell five neighbors, you better love him. Amen. I move on in a minute, amen. <laughs> the meaning of this golden rule lies in three things. Why we practice this golden rule. Number one, we must do to our neighbors that which we know is right. That which is reasonable. That which is fair. And that which is good. Can I back it up? Isaiah chapter 58 and verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Can y'all hear me? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. And when thou seest the naked, that thou covereth him. And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Oh, the church at Jerusalem told Paul, whatever you do, remember the poor. Tell three neighbors, remember the poor. Hallelujah. Oh, remember the poor. Ah, oh, then why do we practice the golden rule? Number two, when we practice the golden rule, we put others upon the same level with ourselves. We can't look down on anybody. We can't look in snobbery on anybody. We can't see anybody as being below ourselves. Can I break it down? We can't see anybody as being hopeless or no good or condemned. We have to see everybody as potentially can be saved. We can't condemn anybody. We can't judge anybody. Everybody can be saved. God loves everybody. God wants everybody saved. That which I would have looked down on now has been elevated in my eye. I got to treat them right. Tell about three names. You got to love everybody. You got to treat everybody right. And I go a little further now. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, the Bible says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory or pride, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Is that all right? And now, lastly, with this golden rule, number three. It allows us to ask the question of ourselves. If I was in this person's shoes, if I were in the same situation, help me, Holy Ghost, if I had the same infirmity, if I had the same financial woes, if I was going through the same thing, if the tables were turned and I was on the begging end, how would I want to be treated? Yeah. Well, tables can turn, life can change, and situations can change upside down. Just as Joseph and his brothers, just as Jesus now sitting on the right hand of the Father, things can change around. It's best to treat folks the way we want to be treated. 
Now I'm going to leave there and go on somewhere else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell two neighbors two ways. Somebody shout two ways. We're going to look at two ways this morning. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Can y'all hear me? For wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Can y'all hear me this morning? And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight, which means narrow, is the gate. Can y'all hear me? And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Is that all right? Yeah. Well, let me first say before we even get into this, there's only two ways. Somebody said two ways. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. There's only two ways. There's a good way and there's an evil way. There's only two ways. There's a way to heaven and there's a way to hell. You're either walking in the way of the saints or you're walking in the way of the sinners. Somebody said two ways. You're either walking in light. I need some help this morning. Are you walking in darkness? You're either walking in the path of godliness or you're walking in the path of ungodliness. Can I break it down? You either on your way to heaven. Are you on your way to hell? I'm going to break this up. There's not a third road. There's not a middle road. There's not a middle ground. There's no compromise. There's no lukewarm water. It's either cold or hot. Are y'all with me this morning? You got to choose which road you're going to take. Can we eat a little bit more this morning? Matthew chapter 7 and 13. Well, if you, if you look in there where it says, for wide is the gate. Can I say that one more time? For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The Bible says the gate is wide. The way is broad. There are many travelers on that road. There are many travelers on the broad road because you have many liberties on the broad road. You can do what you want. It's okay on the broad road. You can do what you want to do when you want to do on the broad road. Can I break it down? If it feels right, you can do it on the broad road. The gate is wide. As a matter of fact, the gates stand wide open. It's a popular gate. Don't get upset with anybody. You can come in this gate. You may go in at this gate with all your lust all about you. And ain't nobody going to say anything. It's okay in the broad gate. You can come in and fit in with the crowd in the broad gate. You don't have to squeeze in in the broad gate because the gate is wide. There's no checkup at the broad gate. There's no TSA at the broad gate. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. You can do what you want, when you want, wherever you want, at the broad gate. Can I break it down? Nobody's going to search it at the broad gate. You don't have to take off your shoes at the broad gate. You can keep on your old clothes at the broad gate. You can keep your old habits, your old ways at the broad gate. You can walk in your old passion at the broad gate. You can walk by sight at the broad gate. Don't worry. It's a broad gate. There's room for everybody. No matter what you believe. As a matter of fact, the gate is so broad. There's many paths in the broad gate. Can I break it down? You can be a Mormon at the broad gate. You can be a Jehovah Witness at the broad gate. You can be a Hinduist and a Buddhist too. And a Taoist too at the broad gate. You can be a Confucianist. I just confused at the broad gate. At the broad gate, they take anybody. New age, old age, atheist, agnostic. I just don't believe anything at the broad gate. Anybody can get in at the broad gate. You won't be lonely at the broad gate. You got a whole lot of company. Y'all don't hear me? At the broad gate. Everybody can come in at the broad gate any kind of way. But the problem is, at the broad gate, they only got one destination. Many roads, but one destination. That destination all leads to destruction. If we follow the crowd, it's going to lead to one destination. It is natural to go downstream, but it takes some effort. Y'all don't hear me? To go upstream. To go down to hell. Doesn't take any effort, but it takes effort to go up to heaven. As a matter of fact, we want to tell the preacher what to preach to us. <laughs> Can I go there? Don't talk about that hell stuff. Eternal death, eternal destruction eternal destination leave off all that stuff you'll scare folks matter of fact you'll scare folks out of hell <laughs> well there is a narrow gate can I talk about it a minute <laughs> then I take my seat <laughs> Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, because straight, narrow is the gate. Can y'all hear me? And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Watch it now. And few, y'all don't hear me. And few there be that find in order to get into the narrow gate you must stoop or you can't get into it because it's a narrow gate you must become as little children because the gate is narrow you must strip yourself because the gate is narrow. You must put off the world and put on Christ. 
Mecca, it's a narrow gate. We must forsake all for Christ's sake because it's a narrow gate. You must put off the old man and put on the new man because it's a narrow gate. The gate is straight. The way is narrow. And only a few find it. Well, a quotation here. A West Indian who chose Islam over Christianity said his reason was, quote, Islam is a noble, broad path. There is room for a man and his sins in it. But the way of Christ is too narrow. Well, to get in the narrow gate, you need Jesus. Can I bag it up? John chapter 14, verse number 6. The Bible says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Talk to me, somebody. The truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but by me. Take neighbor, neighbor. That's the narrow gate. Can I brag it up, bag it up? Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm glad I know his name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the supreme functions of great men is to confront people with choices. When the end drew near for Moses, he confronted Israel with two choices. Can I back it up? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and 19. The Bible said, See, mm, I have set before thee this day life and good Talk to me, somebody. Death and evil. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you. Life and death. Can y'all hear me? Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. One day Joshua challenged the folks in leadership. There's only one way to go. It's the right way. Can I back it up? Joshua 24 and 15. The Bible says, and if it seems evil, until you to serve the Lord. Choose you. You got two ways to choose. Choose you this day whom we will serve. Whether the God, little G, with an S on it. There's a whole lot of them out there. Help me, Holy Ghost. Whether the God which your father serve that were on the other side of the flood are the gods with a little g on it of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell but help me Holy Ghost yeah I gave you a choice but I got to let you know about my testimony I made my choice. I made my decision a long time ago. But, I 
y'all don't hear me this morning. But as for me and my house, help me, Holy Ghost. We gonna serve the Lord. Can I break it down? Tell your neighbor, neighbor. There's only two ways to go. Make your choice this morning. Jeremiah challenged the folks. Jeremiah 21, 8, the Bible said. Get ready to land the plane here, folks. And unto this people, thou shalt say, thus saith the Lord, behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. You got to choose life this morning. Finally, the God man, the total God, the total man, the son of God challenges us this morning. Make your choice this morning. Help me, Holy Ghost. Make a choice this morning. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. This land right there. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight, narrow is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.